Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, October 20th, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Interestingly, after Microsoft had its big patch Tuesday on, well, last Tuesday, we got two additional patches. Now, the advisories are dated for October 15th, so that would be last Thursday. I just uh, noticed them, and uh, both vulnerabilities don't really look like they're critical enough to sort of warrant an out of band or emergency patch, but uh, in particular, the first one, CVE 2020-17023, sounds interesting. It's a remote code execution vulnerability in Visual Studio Code. Now, Visual Studio Code is an editor that a lot of developers like, and uh, if you open a malicious JSON file with this editor, remote code execution may happen. Given that uh, this tool is used by developers who are somewhat a target and that for a developer, it would be perfectly normal to open a JSON file in this editor, I do think uh, that this vulnerability certainly should be addressed and patched quickly. The second one is a little bit more run of the mill, I would say. It's a remote code execution vulnerability again, but it's in Microsoft Windows codec libraries. And uh, given that we have a lot of these vulnerabilities, typically uh, this is not yet exploited. It has not been publicly disclosed. I'm not really sure why Microsoft sort of published a special out of band uh, patch for uh, this vulnerability. It does affect uh, Windows 10 only according to the advisory. Now, if Microsoft releases a special patch, then Adobe has to release one too. And we do have a, a patch for the Magento e-commerce uh, software. Given that this has been a big target in the past, uh, probably worthwhile paying attention here. Now, there are two critical vulnerabilities that are being addressed here. One is a file upload allow list bypass. So an attacker could allow a file that would otherwise be blocked and that could be exploited to achieve a code execution. The second one, well, a good old SQL injection that could allow arbitrary read or write access to the database. Now for Adobe, of course, I mentioned before, it has become somewhat common to release updates outside of Patch Tuesday. And we got an interesting case in Israel that was reported by security company Pandora. And uh, while some of the details are not really all that clear, it appears to be a case of the SS7 protocol being abused to impersonate cell phone users. The SS7 protocol is essentially used to notify the cell phone network worldwide where a particular subscriber can be found. And well, uh, uh, like so many protocols, like for example, BGP, and I compare it sometimes a little bit to BGP. It's a fairly trusting protocol in that any message coming from a cell phone operator will uh, be believed by the entire worldwide cell phone network. What apparently happened here was that SMS messages were rerouted to a malicious operator or a compromised operator. Of course, all it takes is one of the thousands of cell phone operators worldwide to be compromised. And uh, this was used to impersonate various key people at Israeli crypto coin companies. About 20 individuals were affected and then the access was used to, for example, compromise Telegram accounts and other messaging accounts and send uh, spoofed messages to uh, these people's contacts to solicit uh, crypto coin payments. Of course, the other problem here is that many of these services like, for example, Telegram do rely on SMS for two-factor authentication. In the past, this has probably been more often abused by simple SIM swapping attack, which often do really just come down to social engineering attacks, where essentially someone calls the phone company and convinces them to transfer a number to a new phone. 
Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.